Hey, I'm Markia. Want to hear something scary? The Suroi Nguroi, spirits on the prowl. Henjunaha and Lairohlamba desperately wanted to be together, but their families kept them apart, each believing the other wasn't good enough for their child. It wasn't until Lamta Tanja, the day the spirits are fed, that they finally formed a plan to run away together. Lamta Tanja is the first Saturday of the last month of the Mai Tai lunar calendar, where the locals would feed the Suru Unguru, or evil spirits. The whole community would be busy during the sacred activity, appeasing these evil spirits to keep them at bay. Every person had to give some sort of contribution to feed the spirits, or there would be fatal penalties. During it, the elderly women would then take the collected offerings to the crossroads. Henjunaha thought it would be the perfect time to go to Lairulamba, so they could elope unnoticed. As the sun began to set that Saturday evening, the town hurriedly filled their baskets with offerings and headed for the eldest matriarch's house. While Henjunaha's parents were focused on their contribution, he snuck out with his pack. He had to cut through the woods to stay clear of everyone else. It made the trip to Lairolamba's house longer than the regular route, but it would be safer to not be seen. As he neared the middle of the woods, he heard a shrill scream ringing from the crossroads. The high-pitched sound of terror could only mean one thing. Whatever the women had taken to the spirits was not enough. The Soroi Ungaroi were not satisfied, and someone would have to pay. He heard the town begin to panic, everyone running to their homes for safety. This had only happened once before, and several people in town had died, ripped apart by the angry spirits. And that's when he realized what had caused this perilous predicament. He had been so consumed with his mission of love, he had forgotten to donate anything to the spirits. He was the reason someone would die tonight. Henjunaha sprinted as fast as he could, no longer caring about being seen. He arrived at Lairolamba's front steps, where she was anxiously waiting, holding a bag ready to leave. She had heard the commotion and knew the spirits were angry. Catching sight of her love, she smiled and started to go out to him. Henjunaha called out to her to stay where she was. A mist had rolled in and the wind was rising. He saw something soaring towards him, like long black clouds, but with teeth. The entity surrounded him, then knocked him to the ground so he was trapped. Henjunaha tried to crawl toward his love as she reached out to him. If he could make it across the threshold of her doorway, he would be spared. It was his only chance. She screamed for him to move faster, but the spirits continued attacking him, making it impossible to break out of their circle. Lyrolamba yelled to him again, petrified by what she was witnessing and not knowing how to help. He steeled himself to try and reach her. The stones below him turned slick with his blood as he lunged forward, placing a hand on her blessed doorway. She grabbed it as they both mustered the strength to get him across the threshold. Enraged, the spirits fell onto him, their teeth ripping ever deeper into his flesh. Spinning like a tornado around him, they began absorbing each other to unite into one large monstrous being. Flying up to gain momentum, it then soared down just as she was pulling her severely wounded lover inside. The giant united entity pummeled him from above, flaying the skin from his back. He fell into the safe house, but it was too late. His exposed muscles and organs glistened and bled as he died, the pain and shock too much for his heart. Lyrolumba cradled his head, weeping, covered in her lover's blood. Distraught and heartbroken, she watched the triumphant spirits separate and fly away. The Suroi Unguroi were done, for now. But there would be little time to mourn before their next feeding. Their weekly feedings happened each Saturday until the Hindi New Year. Or, as Lyrulamba began to think of them, the weekly chances she had 
to figure out some way to get retribution towards her love's ghostly murderers.